Welcome back all the fans and followers of space fiction. Would you like to build your own space station? A big rotating space station? However, the question I want to answer today is not when or how, but where? Where is the best place to build a rotating space station? A rotating space station cannot be placed just anywhere. A large rotating body behaves like a flywheel. And maneuvering in a weightless state with a flywheel is really complicated. Any attempt to change the direction of the axis of the rotating space station would lead to destabilization of its rotation. And we certainly don't want that. So we have to find a place where it will not be necessary to change its orientation and which will be sufficiently stable and safe. And at the same time it should always be within reach from Earth, not only for communication, but also for the crew exchange. Let's assume that the station will get most of its energy from solar panels. If we cannot change the orientation of the station, then its part containing the solar panels must be exposed to the sun the same way every day throughout the year. We can achieve this only if the axis of the station is perpendicular to the orbit around the sun. Now, let's talk about where such a big rotating space station cannot be placed. There is no way it could be in low Earth orbit like the International Space Station. The ISS needs enough fuel so that it does not fall and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere due to the drag of the atmosphere and the solar winds. In addition, there is too much space junk in low Earth orbit that the ISS also has to avoid. It is simply too risky and very dangerous for our station. Our rotating space station should be much heavier than the ISS and thus the fuel consumption to maintain the orbit would be extremely high. Moreover, due to its orientation, the rocket engines could only fire in the direction of the axis, which means that it could only use them effectively at two points on its trajectory. However, the use of engines could destabilize the entire station again and irreversibly damage it. And we don't want that to. The position of the station must therefore be in such a place that after the station starts to spin, we no longer have to correct its trajectory. As we move further away from the Earth's surface, we very quickly hit the first one Allen radiation belt. This is an area where people cannot survive for a long time due to the high radiation of the surrounding environment. This radiation not only damages the human organism, but also the electronics of the station. Further from the Earth, we reach the geostationary orbit. This orbit has several advantages. The station would always be in the same place in the sky above the Earth's surface and it would still be relatively quickly accessible by conventional rockets. But the problem here is, again, the second outer Van Allen radiation belt in which this orbit is located. In addition, in spring and autumn, this orbit passes through the Earth's shadow, losing the sunlight for more than an hour every day. And why should we worry when there are better alternatives? So let's go on. An orbit beyond the boundary of the Van Allen radiation belt would already be strongly disturbed by the Moon's gravity and thus would not be stable. And what about orbit around the Moon? The Moon has a weaker gravity than the Earth. If we want to ensure that the station never hit the surface of the Moon, it would have to be at a safe distance from it. Much of the orbit would then be out of direct radio contact with Earth. And here we also have to take into account the gravitational influence of the Earth, which means that even the orbit around the Moon would not be stable in the long term. However, there are several stable points in space in the system of every two large bodies. They are called Lagrange points. At these points, the gravitational influence of the two large bodies is in balance. However, 
the space station or any other body cannot be exactly at this point, but can orbit around it. Of the Lagrange points between the Earth and the Sun, only points L1 and L2 are usable. L3 is beyond the Sun and L4 and L5 are not suitable for long-term placement of a space station as they are not stable. However, L1 and L2 have several disadvantages. The first problem is that they are quite far away. They are approximately four times farther from Earth than the Moon. You would have to wait 10 seconds for a response from Earth, which would make communication quite a bit complicated. The space probe often takes more than 3 months to reach this point. And another big problem is that the communication is disturbed by the Sun as it is on the same line with the Earth and the station. Of course, these points are also found in the Earth-Moon system. Placing the station at point L2 would only make sense if we wanted to isolate it as much as possible from communication from Earth. For example, for radio astronomy purposes. However, the journey there would still take quite a long time because we would have to fly much further than just to the Moon. The most suitable place is therefore the L1 Lagrange point in the Earth-Moon system. It is sufficiently stable and is not even in the area of increased radiation. Of course, cosmic radiation will affect you here as well as anywhere else in the universe. But that is already a problem that you will have to reckon with when traveling in every corner of the universe. And let's not forget, if you want to help me so that I can finally build my own spaceship, click subscribe and support me on Patreon on the link in description. Thank you for watching and the next time I fly by the Earth, I will send you another new video from the world of space fiction.